Prediction time. It's that part of the year. Prediction time. At worst, the Grizzlies are going to the Western Conference Finals. Plus 2,000, 20 to 1 to win it all, 12 to 1 to come out the West. I'm going to bet them just because the value is there, but they're just that good. Maybe the most amazing stat that has come out this entire year is that the Memphis Grizzlies, with John Morant, whose MVP caliber play has lifted them to the ceiling, are still 15 and 2 without him. That is absurd. And they don't beat scrubs. They've pounded Toronto, Dallas twice, Miami, Philly, L.A. Clippers, Pelicans, and now the fully healthy Brooklyn Nets without one of the best three to five players in the NBA. He was just sitting there in his little Louis coat, just with his grill in, enjoying the show, had his popcorn in his hand, just loving every second of it. And they destroyed the Nets destroyed them that said everything about a team that is the second youngest in the NBA at 24 years old the Miami Hurricanes that are playing right now in the NCAA tournament are older than the Memphis Grizzlies that is actually a fact that is that is crazy they took it to the Nets pounded them in the first half then Brooklyn showed up gave them their best punch Kyrie and KD cooked in the third quarter to the tune of 42 points Outscored them by 15 in the third and took a one-point lead into the fourth quarter. We're actually favored to win the game by four points, the Nets. Memphis, youngest, second youngest team in the NBA, 24 years old, did not blink. They took the best shot from the NBA's two leading, number two leading odds team. They're what, plus 450 to win it all, plus 600 depending on the day depending on the line, and they just took it to him. Put the clamps on Brooklyn. 16 points they held him to in the fourth quarter. 16. How is it possible to hold an entire team when two of those players are Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant to 16 points in a quarter? 132 to 120. Let me just tell you, folks, keep your eyes peeled. This team is a fucking problem. They are young and they are composed for them to be this young and this composed is absolutely absurd. They are deep. They are athletic. They are unafraid. They are unapologetic. And this was without John ja Morant. John ja Morant, their number one guy, wasn't playing, and they beat the shit out of the Nets. ruh -ro. Imagine if you're trying to break down film on who you're going to guard in preparation for a playoff game against the Grizzlies. Like, who is their, their weak guy you're going after? John Morant, let's just go through the roster. Second in points in the paint, six feet tall, averaging 28 points, six rebounds, seven assists. And he's 22. If you take out Jaw out of the game, then you look locked down on Desmond Bain. He's averaging 18, five, and three, shooting 42% from three. Dylan Brooks, 18, three and three. He's clamps. Some people think the most talented guard next to John Morant is actually DeAnthony Melton who's averaging 10, two on three, 10, two, and three on just 22 minutes. And that's not even taking into account Tyus Jones, the overlooked point guard, who turns the ball less than any other point guard in the, in the NBA and still manages eight, two, and four in 20 minutes a game. Five guards, all of them playing 20 minutes or more, all of them getting buckets. Guys like Desmond and Dylan lock down defenders, two-way scorers, and defensive guys. Then you look at their front line. Nobody ever talks about Jaron Jackson. Jaron Jackson, one of the most underrated players in the league, probably should be a leading candidate for Defensive Player of the Year. He's averaging 16, 6, and 1, making players, making people who thought his extension was bad money look like absolute idiots. He's, I think at one point he was a co-leader in blocks per game. Brandon Clark, Brandon Clark, just an unsung hero, 10, 6, and 1 on less than 20 minutes. He can play some small five. He can play four. He can play three. Kyle Anderson, another unsung hero. Great minutes off the bench. Steven Adams, if you know I like Patrick Beverly, then you know I like Steven Adams. A, an absolute monster, an absolute tough guy, averaging 10 rebounds a game and nearly two blocks, two steals per game. Zaire Williamson, just a rookie, averaging nearly 20 minutes a game. Nice little spot-up three-point shooter. Definitely like... An extra spark. Tell me, where is this roster weak? They roll 10 deep on any given night. 
They can actually go deeper if necessary. Xavier Tillman, Killian Tilly, even John Conchar is shooting 40% from three. This team is fucking stacked. And it might be a hot take, but the more I think about it, with their, with their youth, their, their springiness, their ability to just go toe-to-toe on a night-to-night basis because of how young they are, they can compete for all 48 minutes, and they're deep, right? So that seven-game series is no thing. They're not going to get worn down. You take them seven, they can go another seven with the next team. You know, sometimes you go seven in the first round, and then the next round is where you get knocked out because you're so tired. Not these Grizz. No, sir. I think that they're deeper and more talented as a, as a total team than the Phoenix Suns. And that is saying a lot. I love the Suns. Not saying that they have veteran leadership, but if you can run five guards out there any given day who can give you 20 a night, you are a problem. You are a problem. And how many teams have two guys that are legitimate on-ball lockdown defenders that, you are, that are not offensive liabilities? Like, I like Matisse Thybul. Well, what is he going to do for you, like, offensively? Absolutely fucking nothing. The Memphis Grizzlies are the number one team to watch. You've got Golden State that's vulnerable, Denver that's missing guys, Utah that's very vulnerable from a defensive standpoint, specifically a lot of old guys with ACLs ready to just pop. The Grizzlies are the team to beat other than the Phoenix Suns in the West. So don't, don't listen to me. Just know, come back to the tape when the shit plays out exactly like I said it was.